I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, switch an LED on and off um, from a Raspberry Pi using Python as a source code. Um, so to do this I'm going to use a transistor. I use BC337s because they're very cheap and uh, it doesn't matter so much if you blow one up. Um, they're an NPN transistor which means they're negative, uh, positive and negative on the leads. And this is easy to remember. Um, what the leads are. You go um, CBE, so you've got collector, base and emitter. Uh, on, the, on the emitter always goes to ground uh, and the base goes to a resistor and goes to the GPIO pin that you want to switch the transistor and the uh, collector goes through your load up, up to the power source uh, and I'm going to take it up to the 5 volt line. Um, it's always best to use a transistor when you want to output on the Raspberry Pi for lighting LEDs, you can potentially run them directly from the GPIO pins, but I'd recommend not doing that. And once you learn how to use a transistor, then you can use a transistor to switch whatever you want to switch. Um, so I'll start off by putting this uh, transistor into the breadboard. So I'll go from, so here's my GPIO pin uh, on this wire here. and I've got a ground on this wire going here, um, 5 volts on my top rail and on my left hand side rail I've got 3.3 volts. I'm not going to use the 3.3 volts today because uh, I'm just going to power it from the 5 volt. Um, okay, so I've got a couple of resistors, so this one is a 700, uh, sorry, 470 ohm resistor. And I'm going to use that to limit the current which goes into the uh, LED. Uh, so I'll take take that and the load like I say goes off of the collector so that's the first pin and I'll put the resistor in the board it's best to put these in and then put the power up power on last that you want and I've got the LED and if you look closely in the LED because that, that is, it, it matters which way around they go if you look through them there's a, a small terminal and there's a, a large terminal and the large terminal is the cathode, and so that goes towards the negative. Um, so I'll put that large terminal to the resistor, and then the other terminal will go to the power source. Um, and then the other, I've got another resistor, and this is um, another 470 ohm resistor. And what I'll do is I'll put that to the base, and from from the base. then goes to the GPIO pin so I'll just move the GPIO pin over to to where I get this there so that's the GPIO pin so then the last pin on the transistor is the emitter which I'll take straight down to ground like that and then to power it up the other side of the LED goes to the 5 volt line up there Okay, so I'm going to go through each um, line of the Python code now and, and let you know what it does. So first of all, I import some libraries. The sys library will allow me to check for the return key being pressed, and then I can quit the program uh, when the returns key is pressed. So I need that for that. The time pro, uh, the time package I need for getting the current date and time of the system, uh, and the date and time uh, one I need to format the date and time. In order to print it out on the screen when I when I print out the output, and I've I'm using threading. Uh, so what I use that for is a timer, uh, and the timer will be called every second, and I use that to uh, change the value of the output of the Raspberry Pi every second. And then the Raspberry Pi GPIO I need to to actually do the GPIO calls themselves. Now I've got a, a user value which I can set, uh, and that's the GPIO pin that I'm I'm going to use for the I/O, and I use pin 14 uh, but you, if you use a different pin you can change the value of this and that's why it's at the top of the program so it's easy to change so first of all there's a a procedure which is called init GPIO and this is where I initialize the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi for do, to do what I need it to do so I set the mode to for the pins to BCM and that means that I use GPIO pin 14 rather than the actual physical pin name because it's easier to remember uh, to look up those and and use them, and then I set up uh, GPIO pin fourteen for output, and its initial state is low. 
And then I've got one other procedure which I use in this program and it's the output timer. I use global variables here, uh, which you unfortunately need to do on uh, things like time. When, whenever you're using a thing called a callback, which is this is, you need to uh, use global variables. But really, if you're ever going to pass variables into a function, you need you should really put them in the parameter list um, in, in between the brackets. But because this is a, a callback function, not we're using globals. Um, so what the output value? I'm keeping track of what the current output value of the GPO open is so that I can uh, manipulate it as I require and then the timer thread is I'm um, keeping the track of a value which identifies the timer so that before I exit the program I can make sure I cancel the timer okay so first thing I do is I change the output value um, that I'm using so the new output value is going to e equal the old output value and then this hat thing is an exclusive or and the uh, exclusive was with a with a value of one, so if the current output value is one, it will change it to zero, and if it's currently zero, it will change it to one. Uh, but if you look up the truth table of an exclusive or gate, you'll you'll see how how that works. So what I do is I set the GPIO output of the pin fourteen, which I've got in that constant, to whatever our current output value is. And then I get current date and time, and I display it on the screen. So I display current date and time, I display the GPO pin that I'm using, pin 14, and what the current value of that pin is. And then what I do is I use a, I, this is where I use a timer thread. So it's, uh, what, once it's been through this procedure, this uh, procedure gets to this point, I set up a, uh, a timer, and it gets called every one second, or it gets called in the next second, so wait a second then it call it and it calls this procedure output timer which as you see is the name of our function procedure we're currently in so it will wait a second then call itself that makes sure it, it happens every second and that'll tell the timer to start so we, then we come to the main application so first of all we initialize the GPIO which was the first procedure we went through we set values to initial values uh, it's always you should always do this uh, even if you're sure you know what a value is at the start or you know that you're going to set it you should always set an initial value to be sure and uh, make, make sure there's no no bugs in your program uh, and then I manually call the output timer procedure first so because there's no timer when we first run this program we manually call this for the first time and then when it gets to the bottom of it it'll, it'll set up the timer to call itself in a second and then it'll keep going around and doing that by itself afterwards. And then you come to the main loop of the program uh, and it in the iteration of the loop it, it just it'll sleep for a second and this line what this line will do is it'll wait for a key to be a return to key to be pressed and when that return key is pressed this while well loop will just drop out and finish the program uh, and what we need to do when we're finishing the program is cancel the current timer because we don't want the current timer to trigger after we've uh, finished the program because we're about to close up the um, GPIO and if we call it after we close the GPIO then it will give you an error because the, the function will try and do something with the GPIO so you see the last line is clean up GPIO so we make sure we stop the timer clean up GPIO and then finish the program so I'll run this program And you can see the LED is flashing uh, as the uh, values on the screen change. And that will continue until I press the enter key. So I'll press the enter key now. And so the program finishes and the LED stops flashing.